everyone, it's me, Serena, and I'm so glad you stopped by today. Today's video is going to be different from the content that you usually see here on my channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about skin cancer and skin cancer treatment that I have recently undergone and the importance of seeing a dermatologist, especially when you get to be our age, late 40s, 50s, and beyond. And today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp, and we'll hear more from them in just a few minutes. So like many of you, I grew up in the 70s and the 80s. I was a little kid in the 70s and spent lots of time out in the sun in the summer. Then when I was a teenager in the 80s, everybody was getting tan in the summer the darker the better. So I did that all through high school and then I started tanning beds. And I thought tanning beds were the greatest invention ever because you could spend so much less time in a tanning bed and get as dark or darker than you could from laying out in the sun. And then into my college years, I still went to the tanning bed every spring, you know, before spring break. All the girls are hitting the tanning bed so that they are tanned for when they go down to Florida or wherever for spring break. And then in the summers, I was laying out or I was by a pool. I was always working on my tan. Then once I graduated college, I started going to tanning beds because I was working, you know, eight to five. I didn't have time to lay out in the sun. So when it started warming up in the spring, I would go to the tanning bed bed and get my base tan and get nice and brown before summer came because on the weekends every summer I was at the apartment pool you know laying out hanging out with friends so this continued into my early mid-20s and finally I did back off the tanning beds but I continued to get tan in the summer so whether it was when I was in high school college young adult going on beach trips hanging out with my friends in the summertime it always involved being outside and being tan now I have always been familiar with the dermatologist office in my teens and early mid 20s I dealt with acne then as I got older you know I was still going for checkups every six months to a year then they started noticing you know little spots on me in my 40s I continued seeing a dermatologist annually just for a checkup and that's when I started having spots removed and the spots that I get routinely are actinic keratoses these are abnormal clumps of cells that have been damaged by the sun so they don't grow and exfoliate and slough off like regular skin does. So they can come in the form of little flaky patches, little crusty spots, or just little freckles like you see here. And it kind of feels like sandpaper, but I have these all over my body and I had a lot of them on my chest and every year when I went to the dermatologist I was getting a few spots frozen off. My doctor saw something suspicious over here on this arm and he decided to biopsy it and it came back as basal cell carcinoma. So I, he had to go in then and do a little incision and get it out and I've never had any other trouble from that spot. But then I started getting more and more and more of these actinic keratoses and my dermatologist said we could do that or we could do another one that is much less expensive and more effective and I said well let's do that and it's a topical chemotherapy cream called fluorocyl or the brand name of it is effudex and mine is just in this little bottle it's got a little pump and I was instructed to spread that all over my chest for seven days, twice a day for seven days. First two or three days, nothing. You know, I thought, is this really gonna do anything? Because it's, nothing's happening. I know you've heard me speak about my mother before on my channel, and yes, she is deceased. She passed away in January of 2010, because my mother died from melanoma. So that's another reason why I'm hyper vigilant about my skin, and I visit the dermatologist, and I make sure to get my checkups regularly. 
You know, physical health checkups, such as seeing your dermatologist annually, are very important. It's also important to check up on your mental health. And thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. What you may not know about me is that I have battled anxiety and depression for most of my adult life. Therapy has helped me a great deal, but finding a therapist that's a good fit can be difficult and time consuming. BetterHelp makes that part easy. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the best therapist from their network. You can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. And if your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you would expect from in-office therapy. But with a therapist who is custom-picked for you, more scheduling flexibility, and at a more affordable price. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash stylewithserena. And I've also linked them down below in the description. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash stylewithserena. So after the first few days of seeing nothing at all, I finally started seeing, you know, just some red splotchiness across my chest. Then it progressed to, you know, looking like a sunburn. But at this point, it wasn't super painful. It just, I did feel heat coming off of it, but it wasn't super painful. Now by this phase, it was starting to really bother me. Um, it was tight, the pain was really bad. It was hot. I could feel heat coming off of it all the time. And I don't know if any of you have ever had shingles. I have, and it felt a lot like shingles. Like it feels like you're being stabbed with a thousand hot needles. That's what shingles feels like, and that's what this felt like. And then it just got worse. It's like every day I kept thinking, okay, this is the worst. It's not gonna get any better. I'm gonna turn the corner. But for a few days, it just got worse and worse and redder and more angry. And here you can see where the skin is just like starting to die. Up around the top, you can see some really dark spots. That were, is where I had some pretty sizable actinic keratoses right by here by my collarbones. And it hurts so bad, especially down here on this tender skin on you know the top of my breast. And this is when I contacted my doctor's office and said, hey, I need some help. This is killing me. I need some pain medicine. I need something because I feel like I have a pretty decent threshold for pain. You know, I've had three babies. I've had shingles before. That was the worst pain I've ever had until I had this done. Um, I've also had a breast augmentation years ago, and I've had my share of Botox and filler and needles in my face and all this stuff, but I was not prepared for the level of pain that this treatment caused me. Pain got so bad that I was just not all there mentally. It just took a toll on me. I was exhausted. I couldn't think clearly. And then here you can see the skin started to what they call erode, where the skin actually starts to break up and come off. So at this point, my whole entire chest was like one big scab. It looks shiny here because I had it coated down with that ointment they gave me. That's the only way I could stand it was to keep everything just totally lubed up with that ointment. And if you look here, you can see a couple of spots where the skin has already started to break up and little pieces come off. And this is the point where it started oozing like a blister. 
and underneath that crust of dead skin it was just like a raw oozing mess and it was nasty it was gross it was horrible here I am this is probably a week and a half into the treatment and this was at my absolute low point and here is footage from a reel I did on Instagram this was when I was just absolutely at rock bottom and I went back to my doctor and said you got to do something I'm dying here and they finally gave me some pain pills not many which is fine but they gave me some pain pills to get through the end of this process which this is the skin shedding and while this skin dead skin was shedding you know the new skin underneath was just raw so it was as though I had just one giant raw open wound on my entire chest and it was excruciatingly painful. Here is a selfie I actually took the day that I went to the doctor. I'm sitting in the chair before she came in and you can probably tell by the look on my face and everything that I've had it at this point. I was halfway delirious. Um, probably shouldn't have even driven myself there but I did and you can see the status of my chest it was it was horrible so after a few days of the skin sloughing off and keeping it all lubed up then I finally started seeing some light at the end of the tunnel and as you can see most of the skin has come off but I did have a few spots where it was taking longer right up here by my collarbones those were the last spots to heal and those scabbed over and they scabbed over a second time and they would crack open and bleed and it was just nasty and horrible and then down here lower on my breast I had some more spots that took longer to heal that you can see here in this photo and while that skin was flaking off Sometimes it would come off in like big, huge flakes. And I don't know if you remember the movie Goldmember with Austin Powers, but I felt like Goldmember, you know, when those big gold pieces of skin would flake off of him. That's what I felt like, just these big chunks of skin were flaking off my chest. And now you can see I am three week, almost three weeks post the beginning of the treatment and my skin on my chest here is still looks kind of like i have a mild sunburn it's still a little red it's still it's more red here this is like that worst spot the last one to heal and it is still kind of shiny but it doesn't hurt anymore thank god and i do still have some little bumps down here on, on the top of my breast that are a little bit darker but this skin is so smooth and all those rough spots are gone and some of the wrinkles that were on my chest are gone too so that's a nice side effect of this horrific treatment but i wanted to share this with you because when i first started using the fudex of course what did i do i googled it or i got on youtube because i wanted to see progress pictures of the treatment to see what i could be in for and of course when i saw some other vlogs that people did with this treatment i was horrified thought what have i got myself into but i thought oh maybe it won't be so bad but it was that bad and worse and apparently the stronger the reaction you have to the treatment that means the more damage that you had so i take it that my damage on my chest was very bad but I wanted to share this with you and share the importance of getting yourself checked. Even if you didn't go to tanning beds, even if you weren't a sun worshiper like me, we are all of the age that we just have some cumulative sun damage from just living these years that we've lived. So please go to a dermatologist and get a full body check once a year. And the actinic keratoses that I got the treatment for, they are the earliest form of squamous cell carcinoma, which is another form of skin cancer. Now that it's all over and done with, I'm thankful that I did it. Would I do it again? I don't know. I would do it again for spot treatments. I don't know that I would do a large area like this again because this was brutal and thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video don't forget you can get 10% off your first month using my link which will be down in the description 
and until I see you in my next video, have a safe and stylish day. Bye-bye.